as I was sitting there uh, just praying, he says, today's going to be a good day. <laughs> and I looked at today's date, and today is 322, 2020. And I was like, 22 in our house is a big deal. It's about the doors and the doors of opportunity. And let me tell you, only God can make the impossible, ha the possible happen in an impossible situation. And I really believe that we're coming into a time. Um, it is his resurrection power, which represents the three. Let me tell you how prophetic this is, okay? Because I was sitting there this morning. Um, our title for today is Victory is Yours. And let me tell you why the Lord gave that to, my, to me in my spirit was because, um, because, um, See, the power of Jesus, it didn't happen with the death. Part of it was with the death. But part of the power that we're able to walk in and carry now is because of the resurrection power. It's because he rose on our behalf to come back and receive life again. And as much as the enemy wants to spread death right now and bring things to a death place, the Lord represents the resurrection power of life. And that resurrection power is so big, and, 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 and the resurrection happened for the whole entire world. And I was thinking about this this morning, Rubahashiti, and my son was 12 years old. He was 12 years old, my son Chris, and um, we asked him this question because we were youth leaders at the time, and we asked my son this question, and we told him, we said, you know, when you grow up, what do you what do you want to what do you want to do? You know, that's like a common question as parents to ask your kids, like, when you grow up, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? So I think it's awesome we have the kids in here this morning, because my son's reply wasn't a normal reply. It wasn't a a response that everybody's other kids would have. And, um, and my son's reply was, um, I want to change the world. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it blew me away because, you know, what your kids declare. And, you know, my son at that moment taught me something and said, what we speak out of our mouth has power. And so when he said that, he had no idea what he was saying when he said it. My son now is in charge of our media, which goes out to all the nations, and he is changing the world with every time those cameras go on and every time they go out to, to so many nations and bring life to so many places. Robahashuti, Robahashuti. I just feel the Lord come in right now. <laughs> See, you don't understand the power of your words. So when you say today's going to be a good day, there's power in that. You have to speak that when you wake up in the morning. Today's going to be a good day. And today's not going to be a good day because of something spectacular I've done, but because of resurrection power. We're about to celebrate it very soon here. And let me tell you, Romahashati, all this disaster, all this stuff is coming just so that way it can bring more revelance of who God is and what he's, what he's doing. In Hebrews 13, 8, it said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And somehow we've been manipulated and we've been stirred by media to think something different, that God has changed, that he's forgotten about us, and that we're far, far away from him when really it's the opposite because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> We've always been called to be victorious because he was victorious with his resurrection power. We've always been called to be victorious. And if we just keep reminding the enemy every single time he comes with his lies, every time he wants us to believe something that does not align itself with the truth of who he is, we have to begin to speak it out of our mouth and not agree with everything else we're hearing and everything we're seeing. Why? Because the word of God, which is the truth, is you're, you're taught it by hearing the word of God. Are we hearing the word of God enough right now to agree and align with that word of God? Because if we're not, then we need to. And some of us need to get off the media scales sometimes and get before the Lord and come to him and say, God, let me hear your word. Let me hear what Holy Spirit is saying, not what I'm seeing, not what I'm hearing in the world around me, but what are you saying? <clears throat> 
And so I'm there last night, and the Lord began to show me about Joel and this, this experience he has. And Joel comes, and he has his experience. If we can turn to Joel 2.12. And I really believe this is where the Lord has the body of Christ right now. I've been speaking about this for some weeks now. Do you know that I had no idea, like um, our intercession team, our prayer team, the Lord told us to fast for three days, and we had no idea what God was doing. This is how prophetic we are in alignment with Holy Spirit and what God's doing right now. We had no idea, and there was prayer, and there was fasting, and there was uh, uh, just going after the Lord, and we just said, God, whatever you want, here I am. Whatever you want, we just want to be that sacrifice to lay ourselves down for our town, our community, our state, God. And we began to uh, say prayers into the atmosphere of what he was going to do. So in Joel 2.12, this is the call God's doing right now. A call to repentance. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time and give me your hearts. You know, we get so intertwined with sin. And like, well, I, I'm not good enough. I can't stop sinning in this area. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop doing that. And God is saying, give me your heart. Just bring me your heart and I'll do the rest. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning, but don't tear your clothes in your grief. Don't tear your hearts, tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows, perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem and announce a time of fasting. Call the people together, the elders, the children, harabashati, the kids are in here today, right? And even the babies. Call the bridegroom from his quarters and the bride from his private room and let the priest who minister in the Lord's presence stand and weep between the entry room to the temple and the altar and let them pray. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special possession become an object of mockery. I read this and I was like, this is exactly where we're at, God. All of this is to pull us closer to you. All of this is to bring us closer to you to know that we have no power without him. We need him during this time, and we cannot move forward without him. And as much as we have our own works and as much as we have our own ideas and as much as we have all this stuff, it is worth nothing without him. And he's doing a wake-up call, and he's like, hey, come to me. What does repentance mean? It means changing of your mind, shifting your mindset to come back to him, to be at his feet, to know that he is in charge of your whole entire life. He wrote your story. He has your steps ordered. If he's the one who orders your steps, then that's who you need to go back to. Not your paycheck, not your job, not all these other things. But you go back to him and you let him orchestrate the steps that he's already said about your own life. That Psalms 91, I'm telling you, it's so prophetic because I was like, everybody's been posting it on Facebook, Psalms 91, Psalms 91. But you know that that was the scripture that speak, people gave me as a prophetic word all my life. Everywhere I went, that was a prophetic word to me. Psalms 91, sister. I don't know, but I just see Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalm. So I read it, and I researched it, and I dug into that word of Psalms 91. And I literally, when I go into my prayer closet, I literally f see myself going underneath his wing. I literally see the protection of the Lord come in. And I remember one time this uh, apostle that I was around in Texas came up to me, and he says, I, I just he goes I saw something on you and he says and I'm sharing this with you because I'm going to tell you how powerful the Lord is it has nothing to do with me but I'm talking about his protection and how Psalms 91 works and the angelic that they're talking about 
was the same angelic that was on the Ark of the Covenant. And if you look at the Ark of the Covenant, because of the covenant we have with Christ, the angels come and their wings literally come and they go like this over the Ark to protect the Ark. Now that was in the old days, but now we have Jesus Christ. So now here comes the Father and his angels and heaven, and they come upon his children like this because of the covenant we have with him. And his wings come and they cover us and they protect us. So Psalms 91 is very powerful and it's very deep, but you got to live your life by it. And even though it could be a spoken word over us and people are just copying, pasting it, copying, pasting it everywhere on Facebook and everywhere, that's real cute. But you got to live it. And you got to say, let me position myself underneath your wing. Let me get so close to you, Jesus, into that intimate place that I can be so close that all you have to do is extend your arm to come around me. See, that's the realness of that, of that scripture. But some of us misinterpret or we don't think it's for real. But it has to be a part of your life. It, you have to breathe it in. You have to become the word. You have to encounter the word in your spirit, not just in your mind. That's why the religious can't wrap itself around what the spirit of God is saying. It has to be of the spirit, not just of the knowledge in the mind. Romahashati. So Joe talks about this movement of our heart and God calling us back to him. Then we go to Joel 2:28 through 30. And this is the good part. See, that as soon as we relinquish our heart to the Lord, as soon as we let him in and do what he needs to do in our hearts, this is what happens next. The Lord's promise comes. And God's trying to fulfill our promises right now. And it says the Lord's promise of his spirit then after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth. What were we singing about this morning? Send the heavens to the earth, God. Send the heavens to the earth. Let heaven become one with earth. And so we're going through this process and we're saying it. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, even through worship, I was like, <clears throat> you're trying to bless your kids. You're trying to give us our promises. But if we're too intertwined with the negativity and the bad report that we're getting on media, we will miss what God is doing of his promise in this moment. See, when the enemy comes raging, it's because God's doing something at the same time. The enemy doesn't come raging, and then God just sits on the throne watching everything. He, he, Rabashiti, <laughs> he comes and he begins to do things on our behalf as his sons and his daughters. And we may not, it may not be on a camera. It may not come through the media, but God is at work right now. And he's doing things in people's lives right now. You have no idea, Rabashiti. We are in, in the year, uh, it's 322 2020. And what does he say? He's going to give us vision. He's going to give us vision. Why does he give us vision? He's going to give you vision, not from a standpoint of the death part, but he's going to give you dig, uh, d uh, he's going to give you vision and shift your mindset in the repentance to come from a stance of the resurrection power. And we no longer can stand on the other side of the cross, mourning and weeping and being sad and being at the cross of his death. But God's transitioning us right now. And he's saying, no, change your position and be at the other side of the cross and begin to come to me because my resurrection power is where you need to be, where you begin to see things in a good way and not a bad way. And saying, well, I told somebody the other day, I said, the counterfeit is all this mess, but the real is about to come. And the truth of God is going to begin to bring the real. So that's where we need to be as a body. Okay. 
Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> I was uh, there at the, at the, I, actually, I was talking to my family yesterday. They were like, do you still have your doors open? I'm like, yeah, I sure do. And they're like, how can you have your doors open? And I just got all this mess, right? And I said, I'm sorry that God doesn't change. He didn't change his mind. He didn't. See. God is never affected about what's going on in the world. The world's affected by God. That's the flip side. And we as believers cannot be affected by the world because we're not of this world, but we need to begin to affect the world. And we need to begin to change the world. Like my son said when he was 12 years old, we're going to change the world. And when you hear the bad report, you have the power in your mouth and the authority of your mouth to speak into existence, prayer over that situation to bring comfort and healing and bring other things into effect for the believers and people out there that are suffering. But if you're agreeing with it and you're like, oh, man, another one. Oh, man, this thing. Oh, man. And I'm like, I'm like in the face of it. And I'm like, no, no more deaths. No more sickness, no more this, no more that. I was like, no, you gave us authority to take dominion over the fish and all these things, God. Dominion over sickness. The dominion comes in the authority of who we are in him. But if we don't know who we are in him, we feel powerless. We feel like we don't have anything to offer to the world when it's in chaos. And the enemy will keep you there for as long as he can because he doesn't want you to know who you are called to be in him because as soon as you discover that, then you have power and you're empowered by God. And then you begin to move in power and what you speak comes in power and then sh things begin to shift and move even in your own house is where it has to begin. That's why he's bringing all the families together again. My kids have been so busy doing other things. And these past three days, my kids have come together with me and my husband to help do things for the ministry. And I know it was the Lord. He's bringing things back together again because there's power in families being together. The power comes with each one of you helping one another as a family to begin to take ground for the things of the Lord and the things of the kingdom of God. And I just started hearing this. And so... We're there and opening up, uh, uh, I, I've been told by everybody, opening up this pantry, people are like just telling me, what are you thinking? You're going to have all these people. There's all kinds of sickness. And in the natural, it makes no sense. And I was like, Lord, I was like, he knew everything. He ordained everything at the exact time, at the right moment of when this pantry is opening up. And I'm telling you, yesterday, we, we spent the last three days painting and putting together tables and doing all this, me and my family. And I'm there, and I'm vacuuming the, the room where the actual pantry is going to be. And I, and I began to weep and to cry. Because those of you that have been with us from the beginning know that I would always say this. And the Lord told me before we moved here, um, I lived in Alabama for almost three years, and the Lord told me, he says, when you go to Ohio, you will find greater favor in Ohio than you did in your time in Alabama. And my time in Alabama, I had lots of favor. Like, you have no idea. Like, I had people bringing me things. I never had to ask for nothing. God always brought us what we needed during that time of favor. It was incredible how the Lord did that. And going to a place of transition that I had never been to, and I, we didn't know anybody, that all we could do is cry out to God and call on him for all of our needs and all of our wants in that moment, in that season. And so God tells me this word, and he says, greater favor will you find in Ohio than you did in Alabama. Well, I'm sitting there in the pantry, and I'm vacuuming. And the Lord begins to speak to me. And I look down, and as I'm looking down, the carpet in the pantry is the exact same carpet that I had in my house in Alabama. It was a seven-bedroom house, which means of the, even the completion of what God is doing in the body of Christ right now. And I began to weep and to cry because let me tell you, when you're plowing ground and you're pushing forward and you're going and you're going and you're so busy and you're so busy, and then God shows you just a little glimpse of his favor. 
Let me tell you, it breaks you and it shakes you because you're like, you're in this, God. And I just began to cry and to weep over this carpet. And I said, God, your favor is here, and your favor is in this pantry, and your favor is right here. This is where I'm supposed to be during this time, and you aligned it so perfectly. And then I'm walking, and there's this big old concrete pole there, and I'm like, oh, my God, because where we had a radio station, and in our house we used to have in Alabama, there was a, gre- a big old concrete post there, and I, it would drive me nuts because I was like, can we just move this? And the owner's like, no, it helps the foundation to stay up on the top part of the house. (laughs) So even the concrete pole is foundational. God is saying, stand on the foundations of what I've given you. You've got to stand on his word and the foundations of who God is. Because if we don't, we will be shaken. And what does the word say? He's a rock of our salvation, right? (laughs) We were singing this morning, I will not be shaken. We can't be shaken right now. He's in this thing with us. We've been doing our school every week, and the Lord was reminding me. He was like, people have forgotten who I am. You know, we don't serve a weak God, but a powerful God that is more powerful than any sickness or any plague. You know, and so we've been going over the names of Jesus. And even Wednesday when we were going over the names of Jesus, I was like, there's power in this. As we begin to say it out of our mouth, we're agreeing with heaven and aligning with heaven, and there's power in that. And I started saying, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Rapha, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner, my captain, and my victor. He's my victory. And he's the captain of all things. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of my, pe- of my peace. Did we forget who God was? All of a sudden, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks to be, be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It could say God there, but it says Lord Jesus Christ because of power. 2 Corinthians 2.14, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphant in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. In every place, wherever you go, we should be carrying the aroma of heaven. We should be carrying the aroma of God in us. That wherever we go, we're bringing the shift, we're bringing the change to that area. I walked into uh, one of the eateries around here the other day, and I walk in, and and the first thing the guy says is, "Uh, you have to take it to go. And I'm standing there, (laughs) and I couldn't help but to laugh. And I look at the guy, and he's like all grumpy in a bad mood. And I look at him, and I said, well, hello, sir. How are you today? (laughs) You having a good day? And he didn't even know how to respond. He was like, I didn't expect that, you know, and people are in a grumpy mood right now. They're, they're, they're mad about changes. They're mad about restrictions. They're mad about all this stuff. And it's like, we got to be the light to the world. And so I, so by the end of the time that I left the place, he says, uh, stay dry, ma'am. Have a good day. You see, you have to be the influencer of the people in your community. When you walk into the place, people are like, it, you know, upset and frustrated. You got to be the shift changer. You got to come in and shift their mindset, shift the way that they're uh, reacting to things. First Chronicles 22, 22, 13. Then you will prosper if you are careful to observe the statutes and the ordin- ordinances which the Lord commanded Moses, considering Israel, be strong and courageous, and do not fear or be dismayed. You know that word dismayed? It means the surprise attack of the enemy. Don't be dismayed. Yes, we, had a, we have an attack right now. The enemy's in attack mode right now, but we're not going to be dismayed in that. We're not going to, you know, it also means to break down courage of completely, to be disheartened. And if you look at the people in the world right now, they're being disheartened right now. 
something's happening in their hearts and the and things are beginning to manifest from their heart and where they're really at even believers that have gone to church for a long time and they've they've done the checklist on their list but when you cling to the lord and you have real relationship with the father then you have no choice but to speak victoriously and triumphantly over the situation we've already we've already won this war that's that's attacking us right now we've already won and why does the attacks come because god we have been contending for years now for the fires of god to hit our nation the fires of revival to come to hit our nation. Let me tell you, the enemy's mad right now. He's mad because the healings and the miracles and the signs and the wonders are going to hit this nation, and they're not going to know what to do when that happens, when the shift of God happens. But we're going to all have to be like David and encourage ourselves, and we have to be like David and get up in the morning and say, today's going to be a good day. Today it's not going to be a bad day. We're not going to have no sickness. And you walk in the towns here and you walk in your house and you hear a little cough and a little sneeze. And then you say, no, that sickness has to go. It can't stay in this house. No, this, this, uh, oh, oh, our finances are being uh, messed with. Okay, God, well, you are my provider, right? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You see what I'm saying? And there's power in what we speak, but we can no longer agree with what the enemy wants us to see and look at. We have to come from a different perspective and begin to say things out loud to shift our mindset and shift our spirit because we are kings and priests of the Most High. Our position has not changed. And <laughs> I was just like, I was having discussion with somebody the other day, and I was like, do you think God stopped healing all of a sudden? Do you think that he's left us and betrayed us? Really? Like, no, like, rise up. Rise up and begin to speak life. Rise up. He pulled us all out of some kind of darkness in our lives, right? Did he not pull us out of some dark areas that we've had one time or another? And I just began to see that light come in this morning. And I saw, I, I'm going to tell you what I saw. I saw the light of the Lord come upon our nation. And I saw where, like, the darkness began to shift. And as the light of the Lord came, it was like his hand coming over the nation. And I began to see the rays of light from the Lord's hand. And it began to come down over our nation, Romahashati, that he would be honored and he would be glorified with the light that comes over our nation to begin to shift and move things. But he needs us to come to agreement with the heavens and begin to pray that in. Right now is the time of getting in our face of praying we have to get on our face and pray and we have to say god that situation that i'm hearing on the news shift it and change it god go and touch that family bring comfort to the comfort the comforter is holy spirit holy spirit bring comfort to that family with their loss holy spirit bring comforter bring the comforter of all comforters come and, and submerge yourself in these families that are being harmed and hurt god god that they would come to you god that they would give their whole heart to you and they would know you in such a different way that when they come out of this thing they will come out with more power and greater power that we begin to have a backbone of boldness for God Ramahashati read every story in the Bible and you will see that the tribulations came and you will see the disasters and the chaos came even with what Joel saw but Joel saw the promises he didn't just see the chaos and the destruction actions he saw the promises and he saw how God was calling to a repentance of the body of Christ to give God their hearts again to turn from their ways and to begin to shift into knowing him better so if you're doing anything right now come closer to the Lord and don't agree with everything you're hearing and seeing because half of it may not even be true but you're agreeing with it <laughs> Oh, Robo Shiti, can we stand this morning? See, agreement between one or two, right? Between two, an agreement, it changes things. We've got more than two people in this place this morning. And things are going to shift and things are going to move. And that sickness has to shrivel up and die. 
and it has to die at its root. Whatever the root of that thing was, it has to die. Why? Because the blood of Jesus is more powerful than the sickness itself. The resurrection power, Ramahashati, is where it's at. And we have to begin to shift our thoughts and what we're speaking and walk away from things. If it doesn't, Ramahashati, if it doesn't encourage people, if it doesn't uplift people, we're a prophetic body here, aren't we? Then go to the heavens and ask God what he's speaking. Get on your face and say, what are you speaking during this time? I will not be dismayed. I will not lose courage in what you did at the cross for us. But I will be encouraged by who you are and what you've created me to do. For such a time as this, right? For such a time as this, God. That you would have us in the proper place doing the, 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 the alignment of heaven is so precise right now. That you're at exactly where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. God, we come in thanksgiving this morning, Lord. We come thanking you, Lord, that you've done so much already for us, God. Oh, God, we thank you. <laughs> Not only in the death, God, but in the life and the resurrection power that you've given each and every one of us, God. God, and in this room and people watching online, we agree with life. We agree with your power of your resurrection, God. How oh, it's not just a thing that we celebrate once a year, God. But it's a thing that has to come real to the believers right now, God. That you speak life. You're a life giver, God. And where there's life, there can't be death, God. So all death has to leave right now in the name of Jesus. All sickness has to leave right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would invade the hospitals, God. Wherever they're at, God, you would invade the hospitals. Dispatch your angels, God, that bring the healing oils to our nation right now, God. Let them walk into those rooms and bring freedom in people's hearts right now, God. Tell you what, there's something about the winds of heaven when they begin to blow. And uh, I'm going to share an encounter really quick. We're going to keep this atmosphere and we're going to see what the Lord wants to do right now. But several years ago, I had this encounter with the Lord where I began to see this. It, it, it looked like a water mill. And it, it was, a, it was a, a water mill that, that it was slowly turning. And as it would turn, it would, it would pick up some water, you know. And then I was able to see down this, it, it looked like a pier. And on the pier, there was lights on each side. But I could barely see. And what I could see was like there was just enough light for me to feel comfortable and for me to feel safe where I was at. 
And then I begin to hear like the wind of heaven begin to blow. And as the winds of heaven begin to blow, this, this water mill begin to move rapidly and it begin to move fast. And as it began to move fast, it was spinning and spinning and spinning. And as it began to spin, I began to see the lights begin to fluctuate. The lights on the on the on this pier, the street, began to illuminate. You see, it was such an encounter that I literally felt the hairs on my arms begin to move like static electricity. And as it was moving, the power that came from the wind produced enough light that it illuminated my season. And I'm going to tell you what, some of us have been in a place where we've been too comfortable with what we see. We've been very comfortable with what we see and we're happy to go where we're going because we're like, as long as I can get by, as long as I have enough light, just to go to the next room. But see, there's something about the fire and the wind of heaven that when it begins to blow, there's a power that comes that brings the illumination of heaven. Oh, eyes would be open this morning. Listen, position yourself right now. We're going to pray. Father, right now, we break every spirit of familiarity right now every place of being comfortable or we felt we just get by god right now in the name of jesus we will not become complacent no more winds of heaven blow oh! Oh, begin to illuminate our path. Give us direction this season. Jesus, right now, we will not be complacent. We will not be familiar no longer. Right now. Jesus, we will not be familiar.
just want to be obedient to this. Because I keep hearing standing in the gap. Wow. Oh. I keep hearing standing in the gap. And I don't know if, if there's somebody that you need to stand in the gap for this morning. If there's somebody that you know that we need to stand in the gap for, I want you to come up and we're going to make a line right here. Listen, whether it's a family member, a brother, a sister, a husband, a daughter, let's stand in the gap this morning. There's something that the Lord's doing. Come on. I'm standing for somebody. I'm standing for somebody. Now right there, in the worship. Jesus' name, amen and amen.